Now, this Ravens signing Marcus Williams move was very uncharacteristic of the Ravens because they actually have done something that we've been preaching about on here for the longest. And they stepped way out of their comfort zone and did something that's way out of the norm that they don't normally do. They paid an outside free agent who's young, young guy. They paid him real significant money. This is not something that they normally do. But see, that, that wasn't it. The, the real kicker for me was when we found out from Jeff Marsha, who covers the Eagles, listen to what he said. And I was like, what? Really? He said, the Eagles were competitive in discussions with free agent safety Marcus Williams per source and were close to Raven's offer. So the Ra <laughs> these Ravens that we've been watching for the long, these Baltimore Ravens, these Ravens, they actually outbid for a free agent and a young free agent at that. They actually outbid. They actually offered more money than another team to a free agent who was not on the Ravens. The previous stuff like that just does not happen. That is not the, and on top of that, they closed. They closed the deal. Oh, man, because I know so many Ravens fans are tired of hearing, oh, man, Ravens were interested in that guy. Ravens were interested in this guy, but it just didn't happen. It didn't go through. And we get tired of that. And there are going to be more stories that come out like that. So don't think like, oh, since the Ravens signed Marcus Williams, they got somebody that they were interested in, then it's never going to happen again because it will. It, it'll happen this year, too. Oh, I can almost guarantee it. But this shows the Ravens' willingness and the Ravens' ability to, because so many fans seem to think that, oh, man, we strapped for cash. We ain't got it. We can't do nothing. Why do y'all expect all these people in free agency? Why do y'all keep talking about, why do y'all Ravens fans keep talking about, y'all want this guy and that guy and that guy in free agency? We ain't got no money. We can't do nothing. So why y'all even having a conversation? You're wasting time. Oh, I know. Plenty of people done said that, over, especially over these past couple of weeks. And look what happened. They not only signed somebody, but they signed somebody for big money and they outbid somebody for big money. Now, I know a couple of people, they approached me. They said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ain't great because they, these Ravens, they've done this before. One of my guys said, remember last year? Didn't they offer more money to Juju? More money than the Steelers did and more money than the Chiefs did to Juju to come to the Ravens? And they certainly did. They did. But guess what? They didn't close. They didn't close. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, Juju, he loves the Steelers and whatever. Or he, if he went to the Chiefs, then it would have been a much better passing offense. They didn't close. Bottom line, they didn't close. And in this scenario, they not only offered more money to a free an outside free agent, but they actually closed the deal. Somebody else in the comment section was like, but engraving. Wait, 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 wait. Remember Elvis Dumaville? Remember Eric Weddle? Remember Calais Campbell and Earl Thomas. He was like, see, it is normal. The Ravens, have they offer those guys big money deals. I said, but wait. Eric Weddle, it wasn't really big money, but he was old. He was older. Earl Thomas, he was still young, and they offered him a big money deal. And that, yeah, that's true. Calais Campbell, older guy. And they got him via trade, but his contract was big. Elvis Dumaville, he got significant money. He wasn't too old. But I say all that by saying this. That was, it, it wasn't the normal. If something is normal, it's something that you do all the time. It's something that you do on the regular. Those signings, they were not regular. Well, getting them older players, it, it is. That's regular. But this is something that's just completely different. This is not the norm for the Ravens. This guy is 25 years old. 25 years old. Maybe he's 26. I got to see when, when he was born. But Rick, the oldest that he is right now is 26 years old. And the Ravens paid big money. For, so they paid for a premier. They paid for a player in their prime. They paid significant money for a player in their prime. That's not that wasn't on the Ravens already. That's an outside free agent. Who, who are these Ravens? Who are they? I don't know who they are. I don't know where they've been. 
But let me be one of the first to say it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And please, hey, make yourselves at home. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Now, another thing. All right, you got your free safety. That's cool. That can't be it. That should not be it. That will not be it. It better not be it. It can't be it. Reason being because free safety was very important because that just helps solidify the defense that much more. And the Ravens last year, they gave up so many plays. The Ravens last year, they blew so many fourth quarter leads. The Ravens last year were sloppy on defense. Sloppy. That is the perfect word to describe them. They were sloppy. Missed tackles. Missed assignments. So many things just continued to be missed. Then, of course, there were a lot of missed players because a lot of people got hurt. But still, <laughs> so much stuff was missed last year. You can't, have, you can't run that back. You cannot run that back. Mm -mm. So if you get somebody who knows how to play ball there, who has that experience there, it's not a shot at Brandon Williams. I mean, Brandon Stevens, excuse me. It's not a shot at Brandon Stevens. But now they got an experienced guy back there who's still young, still in their prime. Not some watched up veteran like we're so used to the Ravens signing. They got a guy who's young and still in his prime. So that helps the defense that much more moving forward. But again, I repeat, this cannot be it. And I know that there are a lot of people um, who, a lot of people getting on Twitter and stuff, getting on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of that stuff, saying, oh, all y'all talking about EDC, all y'all talking about the Ravens, and ah, looky there, shut it up. I don't want to hear any, no, no. We're going to continue to have these conversations. Now, I ain't going to get on here. It ain't me to be like, oh, man, EDC is terrible, this, that. No, 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 no. I'm letting this thing play out. We letting this thing play over here on Team Keep It Clean. We, we letting this thing play out. I mean, we really ain't got no choice to. But we're letting it play out. I'm not going to get on here and be like, but I'm going to wait. Let's see what happens. We know what the Ravens need to do. We know what the Ravens should do. But let's see how they approach it. I'm not going to be tripping out about free agency right now because it's literally the second day. It's the second day. Now, if it was like August or something or September and the roster was looking like, oh, Biggie Ikes, okay. We got a long way to go, a, a very long way to go. And I know it's tough to be patient sometimes. That can be one of the most toughest things, not only with football, but in life. Because patience, it requires you to do something that a lot of people don't like doing. Wait. You got to wait. And, and, and with waiting... It's, it comes a lot of thoughts. You start thinking about things. You start speculating about things. You start wondering about what if, so could it be, what's going on? But you have to be patient with this thing. Now, just because you're patient doesn't mean that we still shouldn't be expecting and wanting and hoping for the Ravens to make sure they go with quality over quantity. It's very, very important that they stick with that. Again, same thing we've been saying this offseason, quality over quantity. When it comes to free agents, quality over quantity. When it comes to the draft, quality over quantity. I would much rather five, six impact rookies over 10 draft picks. And I'm not saying every single rookie that they draft is expected to make this huge impact. No, but I would rather... Five to six guys who you know, all right, plug and play. Let's do, let's do your thing. How, how are you going to transform this franchise? How are you going to make a mark on this franchise? I'd rather that than them bringing 10 rookies in. 10. Yeah, Ravens got quite a bit of holes to fill. 10 rookies? No. And I, I don't expect them to use all those draft picks, at least for the draft. But... Stuff is bound to get, well, it already is interesting. And I kept, keep saying it, man. It's off season. I, I love it. I love it. Um, but, yeah, Ravens, they still got plenty of work to do. 
So the jury is still going to be out on this offseason. It's not over. Mar- Marcus Williams, he doesn't end things. He, he, he doesn't stop like, oh, okay, well, all right, well, Ravens, they, they took care of it. All right, right, front office, good to go. No, 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 no. That's a great start. Great start. I commend them for that start. Amazing job. Oh, I love the signing. Love it. Because, again, out of the comfort zone. But that's not the end. And it shouldn't be. And it really better not be. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.